Let's read the Gospel of John, Chapter 1. The Gospel of John is extremely evangelistic as it presents Jesus as the Savior of the world. It introduces him to both Jews and Gentiles, to the whole world, to all people. The Gospel of John was written with the estimated probable date between the years 80 and 85 AD. Chapter 1 presents John's account of the Lord Jesus as the eternal being who was with God in creation. This account deeply resonates with what is written in Genesis, chapter 1, portraying our Lord Jesus as eternal and in his pre-existence since creation. John chapter 1, The Word Became Flesh In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What a marvelous text! These opening verses of chapter 1 of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What an incredible revelation! This declares that our Lord Jesus was present in creation with God. It shows that Jesus is eternal and that without him, nothing that was made would have been made. In other words, if God created all things, and indeed he did, then Jesus is also God because he was there too. Jesus was not created, he did not come into being when born from Mary's womb. Instead, Jesus was already there from the start, from the earliest times, from eternity, because he was and is God from the beginning. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. The word was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Mark these two verses in your Bibles. They are very beautiful. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. In other words, he came to his people, to the Jews, and the Jews did not receive him, but to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. What a wonder! And God revealed himself to us and to all of us, to all of you, to each of us who received him. Through Christ Jesus, we have the right to become children of God, adopted children. Hallelujah! Praise be to the name of the Lord for such great salvation, for so much love towards us, allowing us the privilege of being called children of God. They were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bears witness about him and exclaims, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. John the Baptist denies being the Christ. This was the testimony of John when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Some Pharisees who had been sent asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. 
All this took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. Therefore, this verse 29 is crucial because the evangelist John highlights John the Baptist's statement that Jesus is presented here as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In other words, this language, this statement was very clear, specific to the authorities of the law, who were well acquainted and knew very well what this meant. This figure of the Lamb was deeply rooted in Jewish culture, they understood very well the aspect and function of a Lamb in relation to the purification of sins. And when John presents Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, this statement was a reference to the Messiah. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. So, John bore this witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. So, see how many decisive, emphatic statements John makes about Jesus, without a doubt saying, This is the Son of God. And the vision that John the Baptist had of the Spirit descending upon Jesus in the form of a dove emphasizes everything John presents about Jesus, emphasizing Jesus as truly and genuinely the Son of God. The first disciples of Jesus, the next day again John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So, they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. May God continue to speak to my heart and your heart through his rich word. Amen.